processes that we've been developing and optimizing and learning in Dr. Gao's lab. And I'm going to go through kind of what the processes are and why they're important. What I'm going with them won't be as heavy on the physics as we have in the previous uh, presentations. So hopefully you'll like it better. Um, so the state of uh, knowledge in the field of neuroscience. There's two areas that we're doing really good with. At the top, they map the function of the brain to specific regions of the brain. We know very well what certain regions of the brain do and how they talk to each other. This is from uh, things that we've realized during surgery and also from the advent of functional MRI and positron emission tomography. At the bottom, cellular and molecular level, we're also doing very good. We know a lot about the uh, cell biology of neurons and the electrophysiology of neurons. We have uh, certain receptors that are used. This is all very good. However, in the middle, how do we get from these single neurons to here? We know a lot about, about what it looks like, but we don't really understand how the connections actually come together to uh, store memory. So the current challenges to filling in this middle area are, there's a couple of them. The most challenging area in neuroengineering today, and this isn't from some Nobel laureate, but this is a person who I think is, publishes good papers. So, you know, don't take this too much. It's still in a small area. But the most challenging area in neuroengineering today is to determine the formation of memory at the cellular level. In order to achieve this, it is essential to acquire electrical recordings from individual neurons. Great, I agree. I want to do that. So, as the process extends, as the processes extend from the neurons, the neurites, the axons, the dendrites, during network formation, they tend to displace the soma from its original position. So, as the neurons actually grow out their extensions, it, if, it, if we put the neuron on an electrode, it might be leaving the electrode, which is bad for trying to monitor it. So, just a quick uh, review of the approaches that other people are using. Most microelectrode array research is done in this manner with a random monolayer of neurons cultured onto the microelectrode array. Uh, you, can, you can learn a lot of things this way, but you don't know how the individual neurons are talking to each other. So, we move forward a little bit. Here's some uh, electrons or electrodes. With these neurons that were originally only electrodes, they're starting to move off. They're not confined. Some other people have been using microcontact printing to pattern proteins onto the surface of either a slip or a microelectrode array. These are adhesive proteins and uh, adhesion non-adhesive proteins that create a pattern of neurons across the electrodes. The limitation here is that there's still lots of neurons in these channels, and this is not a neuron, this is, this is probably 50 neurons. So while we have some control, we're, we don't have that single cell control. Other approaches that haven't been working, we have these uh, electrodes buried in microwells with a cap on them, and uh, tunnels for the neurites to grow out of. The problem with this is that as the neurites grow out the, of these tunnels, the neurons actually come off of the electrode and sometimes crawl out of this hole. You would think that the cap will keep them from doing that, but this is a phenomenon that's actually been studied by other people looking at microfabricated uh, devices in neurons. Stepwise photothermal etching. Uh, this is a way to direct the outgrowth of neurons from A to B so we can control postsynaptic and presynaptic, which cell is which. Important here is this. Most of these processes where people are putting single cells into a micro well, they're using a micro pipette like this and placing it in there. This, this might have some problems with 3D substrates, and it's also time consuming, and opens up your dish to contamination as it's an open air. Closer to what we're doing now is this elastomeric membrane, this is by the Pine Group, and they're using Indian tin oxide electrodes, just like we're using. So they uh, align a membrane with microwells in it and microchannels, put the neuron in there, and, and study the neuron across these electrodes. So there's some other applications that we can do besides looking at memory formation at the cellular level. We can use this to create disease models, Alzheimer's disease, or anitrophic lateral sclerosis, where in a live animal, it's very difficult to study.